<sighs> so the Philadelphia 76ers have lost three games in a row. The last one is their worst loss of the season against the Detroit Pistons on the road. The Pistons have been playing better, especially since the All-Star break, and Cade Cunningham has been one of my favorite players to watch this year, especially just seeing him the last month or whatever go up against contenders like Boston and, hell, even Philly yesterday. And just there's minutes, there's long-minute stretches in these games where Cade Cunningham just looks like the best player on the floor. But we're not here to talk about Cade Cunningham. We're here to talk about the main thing that is always going to hold the 76ers back from winning a championship as long as this factor remains in the organization, and that is head coach Glenn Doc Rivers. I'm just going to say up front, I was lukewarm on the Doc Rivers hire when it happened. I wanted Ty Lu. I wanted Mike D'Antoni. I basically wanted a bunch of other options I could think of before even going to Doc Rivers. And I acknowledge I've been a Brett Brown supporter in my time as a Sixer fan. And while I do acknowledge that Brett Brown had to go at the end of the 2019-20 season, the bubble season, and it was time for a new voice on the team, Doc Rivers was probably a good option to replace Brett Brown in the sense that he had credibility with players, which is the most important thing in a coach or one of the most important qualities in a coach. He has cachet. He's a former player. He's a big name. And for all of Doc Rivers' faults that I'm about to just go off on here in a second, he is somebody like a Phil Jackson who is able to coach star players, though that quality honestly could also be debatable given the combustible locker rooms we have seen from his teams recently, specifically talking about the Clippers. Now, these last three games just made me come to this conclusion, and I've been complaining about Doc the day he was hired, even when the team was good, even when we had a great shot to go to the Eastern Conference Finals last year, and yes, Ben Simmons was a big part of why the 76ers choked against a team that they absolutely should have beat 100 times out of 100 if we ran a simulation, but Doc Rivers was equally a big part of it. He has always been a plan A guy, and if plan A doesn't work, well shit, I don't know plan B, oh we'll just try this half ass thing. That's what cost him in the playoffs. He doesn't adjust. I can list all the mistakes he made in the Atlanta series that led to me wanting Doc to be fired immediately after the playoffs. But this year, it's just, it's a masterclass. And look, he deserves credit for holding the team through the Ben Simmons saga. Though, honestly, it was really Joel Embiid that held this team together because Joel Embiid could have just blown the whole thing up himself because he has that much cachet in the city and in the organization. But Doc Rivers' coaching just hasn't changed. It continues not to change. And as long as he is here, the 76ers will not win the championship. They might make it as far as the Eastern Conference Finals if the seeding breaks right. Right now, the Sixers are fourth. I like the chances against the Bulls. The Sixers own the Bulls. Joel Embiid specifically owns the Bulls. I like the Sixers' chances against the Heat because I have illustrated before that I am now out on Miami as a contender that could come out of the East. But as far as championship goes, no. Because one, Doc doesn't adjust well. He loves to stick to his first plan. He loves to play all bench lineups stubbornly. He hasn't been playing all bench lineups recently since the Harden trade because he's been staggering. But let's just go over the staggering for a second because early on in the trade, I gave Doc Rivers credit. He was staggering the right pairings, which, by the way, is also insane that I have to give a head coach credit for doing what was the obvious thing that everyone that's a Sixers fan wanted Doc to do the minute the trade happened. They staggered Embiid and Harden's minutes. It was usually Harden and Harris and then Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid. But over the last few games, the staggered pairings were Embiid and Harden and then Maxey Harris, which has a few issues. One, 
You're not having one of your two best offensive players on the floor at all times. Also, Tyrese Maxey is a second-year player, and you're pairing him with Tobias Harris, who has historically, this season at least, not been good anchoring mostly bench lineups. And then you're adding Tyrese Maxey to the mix to that when Harris is probably going to be commanding the ball. It's just... I get experimenting with those pairings against bad teams, but against Milwaukee, there is no way on God's green earth you should be continuing to use those pairings. Go back to the correct pairing. Have one of Harden and Embiid on the floor at all times. The Sixers were up double digits against Milwaukee. The minute those two go to the bench, Harden and Embiid go to the bench, and they trot out Paul Millsap, and we'll get to the backup center situation later. Don't even get me started with that shit. But as soon as Paul Millsap trots in there because Doc didn't want to play DeAndre Jordan because he wasn't the right matchup, as if DeAndre Jordan was a great matchup in any other game, Giannis decided to score 15 straight points by himself and lead the Bucks back, especially as he caught a rhythm heading into the fourth quarter and just demolished the Sixers. That's unacceptable. On top of that, you're not running the sets or the flowing offense that we saw the first five games. And yeah, some of that was a honeymoon period, but there were legit sets the Sixers were running that I was like, oh, okay, this offense is going to be really dynamic. Last few games, ISO heavy, James Harden, dribble, 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 everybody stand around. Not the pass first, Harden. Not the Harden that's good at striking the balance between scoring and driving. Harden looks lost out there. Also, he does look sapped physically in some games, and then some games his burst will just randomly pop back up. But my other problem with Doc Rivers, his propensity to not give young guys the chance to develop in games or to prove to themselves that they can be useful players in Doc Rivers' rotation. It's been like this with Isaiah Joe all year. He should have been getting minutes over Furkan Korkmaz and at times Shake Milton when he was just getting back from injury. And then the backup center situation, because the Sixers have two young centers, and I'm going to, you know, tell a little bit about these guys to the people who really aren't familiar with the back end of the Sixers bench. Two second round bigs that have been taken in the draft over the past two years in the Daryl Morey era, Paul Reed and Charles Bassey, young athletic bigs that, yes, make mistakes. Paul Reed doesn't really know where to stand on the offensive end of the floor, but he's very active, has a long wingspan, he's 6'9", can switch. Played Giannis really well early in the year against the Bucks On national television, Paul Reed actually defended Giannis quite well. Giannis shot 4 of 11, I believe, against Paul Reed, and it was like legit. Paul Reed did a great job keeping his hands up, using his link to bother Giannis, using his athleticism to bother Giannis. But what does Doc Rivers do? Because he has Paul Millsap and DeAndre Jordan, trusted veterans on the team, he trots out Paul Millsap, and Paul Millsap, who is long in the tooth, just gets demolished by Giannis. Paul Reed's nowhere to be found. Charles Bassey, second round pick this past draft, had a little bit of a contract dispute before the season started, but they got that sorted out. He's a young, athletic big, kind of fits the prototypical arch type of a center that can play next to Harden, an athletic big with soft hands, can finish, is actually smart, had some really great games, and in the minutes that Charles Bassey has played, he doesn't look completely lost out there. I believe early in the season, the Sixers broadcast reported that some of the coaches told Doc Rivers like, hey, Charles Bassey is ready. And Charles Bassey, when the Sixers went on the road in Denver, where the Sixers won, Charles Bassey had a great game, and he did a decent job at least staying with Nikola Jokic. Those guys, they're raw, they're young, they're going to make mistakes, but they don't even get the chance to make mistakes. And it's very clear that DeAndre Jordan is washed, Paul Millsap is washed, but Doc still keeps trotting them out there. And then the kicker today when I get home from work, Paul Reed is sent back to the G League. And Charles Bassey also sent back to the G League. It's infuriating. They keep tr He keeps trotting out DeAndre Jordan, and then he's shocked when he realizes that the bench unit is just letting the other team back in the game. DeAndre Jordan can't jump anymore. He can't catch a ball anymore. He can't finish a damn layup anymore. He won't even jump to contest shots at the rim on defense. And even when he does jump to contest shots at the rim, he can't jump as high as he used to. It's an e You might as well be finishing a layup over a cone. And Doc is still trotting him out there. 
at least play the young athletic guys to give the Sixers a chance to win some possessions on the defensive end of the floor. One or two or three possessions can make the difference in a game, and the Sixers aren't even putting out their best foot forward because Doc Rivers just just old school. He doesn't trust young guys because they're going to make mistakes, but he's fine with Paul Millsap and DeAndre Jordan allowing layup after layup at the rim, not getting back in transition defense because they're fucking slow. It's infuriating. And in the Pistons game yesterday, Doc Rivers wouldn't even trot out Paul Reed against the Pistons in an environment where Paul Reed can maybe get some meaningful reps. That's the other thing that's frustrating. When Doc Rivers traded for Paul Millsap, when the Sixers claimed DeAndre Jordan from the buyout market, there was this thought that, okay, Doc Rivers has four options that he could kind of rotate around and play with and see how the backup center position shakes out. Reed and Bassey never got a chance. And this is my whole problem with Doc Rivers. He's just too old school. He's too stubborn. He won't adjust. He refuses to experiment unless he absolutely, absolutely has to. Like when Joel Embiid was out with COVID earlier in the year. Hell, when Doc realized in the Pistons game yesterday that DeAndre Jordan wasn't going to work as if he needed more evidence to show him that he wasn't going to work, he trotted out Tobias Harris in a George Niang 5-4 combo. He played Tobias Harris at center before giving Paul Reed a chance. Like I said, Paul Reed and Charles Bassey, they're not world beaters, but they're athletic, they're active, they're long, they're going to make mistakes because they're relatively young players, but at least their athleticism gives the Sixers a chance to get a deflection here, a deflection there, maybe some better rim protection, but no, Doc Rivers would rather trot out veterans. It's frustrating, man. This has been going on for two years now. He won't play Isaiah Joe. He barely gives him any time this year. He watches Furkan Korkmaz all year shoot 28% from three or whatever the hell it is, and... Finally, at least recently, he started benching him, and then these last few games, he let him back into the rotation. But Isaiah Joe should be getting minutes. He's a deep three-point shooter. He's a better defender than Furkan Korkmaz. At least Shake Milton's ahead of Furk in the rotation now, which is good. But still, so Doc Rivers is willingly going to roll into the playoffs with two sieves at the backup center position that is honestly worse than the 2019 backup center situation, and Sixer fans like myself don't need to be reminded of how the backup center position fucked us in the 2019 playoffs. On top of that, there's just no creativity, no trust in young guys. I'm just sick of it. And I know there's going to be some Doc Rivers defenders. One, I'm not even going to respond to you. But also, I just can't imagine that there are Doc Rivers defenders anymore. And that's the other thing with Doc Rivers too. In his press conferences and all that stuff, he just gives off this air of, I'm not going to take full responsibility of what happens. And he just calls out his players. Call them out in private. Stop calling them out through the press conferences. That's how we got in trouble the last time. Even though I thought your comments about Ben Simmons were very mundane and I thought were very just stupid to overreact to, don't call out your players through the press. It's frustrating as all hell because, yes, the Sixers roster definitely has some flaws, especially after the Harden trade now. I think after this bigger sample size, I think it's safe to say I would still do the trade 100 times out of 100. I don't even think that's a debate. And the Sixers will definitely need this free agency for Daryl to put the ideal team around and beat Harden and Maxi. But my God, Doc, lack of adjustments, sticking with one plan. It's just and I don't even have the Sixers as the favorite to come out of the East. I just think the ceiling gives us a chance. My pick would still be the Milwaukee Bucks to come out of the East. I think it's going to be a Suns-Bucks finals again. But the Sixers are not putting their best foot forward. And as long as Doc Rivers is the coach of the Sixers, they're just not going to win a championship. I don't know what else to say.